Hi, this video is made for one of our um, YouTube subscribers who had an inquiry about making a detection um, system for um, glyphosate. Now, um, the structure of glyphosate, the first thing that we did is um, we took a look at the structure just to understand, you know, what kind of molecule are we trying to detect here? And the thing that we noticed was it's got lots of what we call heteroatoms, which includes things like um, a phosphorus atom, a nitrogen atom, and an oxygen atom. So there's quite a few um, heteroatoms in this molecule, which means that it has a good chance of being electrochemically active. So at Zimmer and Peacock, you know, we do get these kind of inquiries, and um, we like to sort of respond to them and sort of give some value back to the people who subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, so what we did was we took a look at um, this molecule, and we were trying to answer the question, you know, can we make a system to detect it? And because obviously at Zimmer and Peacock, we're uh, super interested, we're really focused on electrochemistry. You know, we were obviously looking to make an electrochemical sensor for this molecule. So the first thing that um, we did was actually search the literature. Um, the really good thing about um, electrochemistry, if you're, going, if you're going to make a sensing system, then electrochemistry is a really good place to start because there's a lot of academic um, research done in this area, but not so much of the academic research has actually been commercially exploited. So I did a search on um, glyphosate and electrochemical detection. And we came back with this paper, and as soon as we looked at it, um, they were detecting uh, glyphosate directly on the electrode using um, a technique called voltammetry. And I just want to mention ResearchGate because I was able to um, get this paper from ResearchGate. I think it's you know it's a shame it's a bit of a barrier, but otherwise you know to get this paper is like you know thirty dollars. But if you remember ResearchGate, then the authors have kindly put the paper onto ResearchGate. Um, so in order to answer the question, you know, can we make a, um, a sensor for glyphosate, which is a pesticide, or more strictly speaking, it's a herbicide? Quick answer is yes. It's, there's some electrochemical, oh, sorry, there's some literature precedence for this. And um, we were able to see that they were doing this by um, voltammetry. And... The further I read on this, they were also suggesting um, screen printed electrodes. Now I am going to put a link to this down below. This is one of Zimmer and Peacock's, um, what we call hypervalue carbon electrodes. It's basically 99 cents per electrode, so we sell them in packs of 200. Um, and the reason I'm suggesting this is because I know that this will work on carbon electrodes. Because in the end, with an application like this, you have to be able to do it on a platform that you think can be low cost. And so screen printed carbon electrodes seem like that kind of platform that we can, even at low volumes, sell these screen printed electrodes at 99 cents each. So what I'm going to do is I put a link down below and um, suggest that if you're interested in detecting glyphosphates or other pesticides, and we think that they're electrochemically active, then something like a screen printed carbon electrode is a good platform to do it on because they're intrinsically um, low cost. Now we did do an entire um, um, webinar focused on electrochemical techniques. And in there we did touch upon voltammetry. What I'm gonna do on the next slide is show you where that uh, video is or that webinar is. But voltammetry, um, just a quick summary is a technique where we apply a voltage to an electrode and as we increase the voltage so as we go from in this case from minus 500 to plus 500 we suddenly get what we call oxidation waves and on the return we get reduction waves so voltammetry will give you um it will allow the oxidation reduction of molecules not all molecules but glyphosate is electrochemically active so it will allow you to in this case increase the voltage and the glyphosate is oxidized and on the way back there's a little reduction wave which kind of shows you that it's only partially reversible which is completely fine but it's basically giving you a fingerprint and you could then contrast that fingerprint with ferroferrous cyanide which has a very distinct fingerprint or contrast that with um, capsaicin which has another very distinct fingerprint 
And so the fingerprint helps you with understanding, you know, whether it's the molecule that you really think it is, or the shape, let's call it. And the peak heights, as in the original paper, are proportional to how much molecule was in the um, sample. So as I say, there's an entire um, webinar on this, and I'll put a link um, on the YouTube channel to where that um, video is. So we've, to we've talked about, um, you can electrochemically detect glyphosate. I think you should do it on a screen printed carbon electrode, and I'll put a link to the electrode I'm suggesting. Um, and also, um, you'll do it obviously by voltammetry. And then you need the hardware itself. And so I've, I'm quite a fan of this Sensit potential stat. Because basically it's so small. This is the smartphone that it's plugged into. So the smartphone is hosting the software. Um, and it's also providing then the power. And the little screen printed electro goes in the front side there. So I'm going to also um, put a link to that. And I'm also going to put a link to a video where we kind of show um, one of our scientists using... Um, a glucose sensor in his case and a and the potential stat and the smartphone and he's using it to detect glucose but it shows you the kind of setup that you would need in order to use um, this type of potential stat and then i did touch on it earlier on but i just want to talk about the signal the signal is actually um quite strong um and it's probably worth saying that if you want to work in ppm parts per million or parts per billion um, on the Zimmer and Pigot website, we do have a, a calculator for converting from millimolar to ppm and from ppm to millimolar. So if you want to convert between these units, so 0.3 millimolar is actually quite a high concentration, but they do have a lot of signal. Um, and then the, the water is literally here. So water, and then they've spiked it with increasing amounts of um, the glyphosate. So they do have quite a strong signal, but it's also quite a strong concentration. And if you're a little, I don't want to say confused, but don't know how to work between PPM, which is parts per million and millimolar, because I know in environmental sciences, they seem to use PPM rather than um, millimolar quite a bit. So the, the signal is strong and your background signal for water is low in comparison to that. So in summary, if you want to detect um, a herbicide like um, glyphosate, then you can do it by voltammetry. I would suggest a um, the first place to start is a screen printed carbon electrode, and I would suggest the Zimmer and Peacock ones. A because I am biased, but B um, we do try and manufacture these and do manufacture these to a high um, quality and high repeatability, um, and we also characterize these electrodes before they actually get shipped, so we know that they're functioning the way we intend them to do, which it sounds obvious, but actually it's quite unusual that we do do that. And also their cost is, even at low volumes, their cost is low. And when you go to high volumes, you know, the costs start going to things like 50 cents. And in really, really high volumes, they go to 5 cents. And then you do need um, an instrument to, me to measure it. Now, what I'm describing here is really how to do a proof of principle, you know, experiment you know take the molecule use it by voltammetry do the experiment on the end of a screen printed electrode and use a little um potential stat like the sensit the question could be well how do i convert that then into a product you know, uh, because in the end sort of um you know consumers or scientists like environmental scientists are not going to be interested in the voltammetry itself and so to convert that raw signal into something that's meaningful. At Zero Peacock, we're starting to apply uh, AI algorithms to kind of look at the entire shape and say, yeah, that is the molecule of interest. And then just using the sort of area under the curve or the peak height to say, and that it's at that concentration. So I haven't really answered the question here is, how do you take this raw signal and now start converting it to something that's actually useful for real people? But I wanted to do is describe a, um, a set of hardware and technologies that if brought together would give you a proof of principle. But the quick answer is yes, you can detect glyphosate. You can do it on carbon electrodes. I would suggest a screen printed electrode. 
to do the scientific experiments, you will need a potential stat. And I quite like this small sensor potential stat because it just feels like a product, you know. And then there's a once you've done that proof of principle, then there's a really challenging part now of actually taking the raw signal and converting it to something that's meaningful to you know people who are not electrochemists. And if that's interesting to people, then we can make a video about that um, later on. Okay, um, as always, like I say, this video is made in response to a question that we had. And if you've got questions, um, please leave them in the comments or contact us at Zimmer Peacock. Okay, thanks very much.